Hello, my name is Danny Blank, and we are continuing to talk about the subject of extending the growing season. These are ideas for helping farmers make their farm more productive throughout the year. In this session, we're going to be talking about producing fuel wood on your own farm. What does fuel wood have to do with, with farming and, and extending the growing season? Wood is such a precious commodity for rural families. It is something that is both consumed and sold. It is used on a daily basis for cooking and for construction. And it is this daily demand for wood uh, that creates an extra burden for farm families as they go out and collect uh, wood. I want to show you just a few pictures just to prepare us as we... Uh, begin to talk about this important subject. Uh, so much of a day is spent uh, harvesting and, and collecting wood. Some studies have reported that families will spend as much as uh, five hours per household uh, collecting wood on average per day. And this takes a huge toll on families as they go out and collect this wood. In some cases, they can't go out and collect and they have to buy, and so it's an added expense. Um, so it is a, a huge issue facing farmers all throughout the world because most people in rural settings in the tropics are using wood for cooking. Um, they use wood mainly in the countryside, and you see here charcoal uh, in this photo, which is being transported to the cities to be used there. It is also commonly used and sold for construction purposes, as you see uh, in this uh, photo here. And huge amounts of wood are being used uh, for making bricks and pottery. It's difficult to really assess how much wood is actually being used by families, but it is enormous, and uh, st statistics are hard to find. But to, just to try to get um, some idea, I've put some numbers here on this photo to show how many metric tons that a household will use per year in studies for these uh, countries, such as in India, 2.8, China, uh, 4.5, South Africa, 5.3 metric tons. It's more in those colder uh, highland climates like Bhutan, uh, 12 metric tons. Just as people need and use trees on a daily basis, the earth needs trees. God has designed them, he's made them to provide so many life-giving functions. Trees give the earth cover. They help stabilize sloping land and protect riverbanks and roadsides. They slow the impact of raindrops and the movement of water. Trees cool the earth's surface and moderate climates. They provide habitat to countless animals and plants and all kinds of birds of the air and orchid flowers that grow in their shade. Trees being incredible beauty to the earth, and they are so essential for the critical life processes such as the purification of air, the cycling of water, and the recycling of plant nutrients. We see the significance of trees all throughout the scriptures. We see mentioned the cedars of Lebanon, the cypress and the fir trees, the almond and the pomegranate, the oak and the acacia, the trees of frankincense and myrrh, the fig and the olive. These trees produce valuable products such as food and beverages, valuable leaves, timber, fuel wood, oil, rubber, fragrance. All these products contribute to our daily life. However, there is a growing wood crisis in the world. As forest and trees are in the landscape are becoming increasingly scarce, we are harvesting more than what is being replaced, and this is called deforestation. The day-to-day -day pressure and need for fuel wood has become such an enormous burden, consuming huge amounts of time and labor to harvest, collect, and transport. But it is also a burden on the land. As trees are meant to care for the earth, the animals and the rivers, the soil and the air, and especially people, the very lack of them now is devastating the things they were created to sustain. Rainfall patterns get interrupted, soil temperatures increase, Habitat for animals is lost. Valuable soil is, is wiped away. All this takes a further toll on people, on the crown of God's creation. And people look for substitutes 
As fuel wood is becoming increasingly scarce, they gather straw and manure and even plant roots. But these are not satisfactory substitutes um, and in the long run can worsen the land. Sometimes that's people's only option, but they really, uh, in the end, involve hurting the earth more and ultimately people's ability to produce more from their land. So in this session, we're looking at several ways to produce wood on your own farms. For some, this may not be possible because your area of land is so small. But by planting trees and deliberate strategies for those who can, your family can reap huge benefits and the earth as well, which we are meant to be stewards of. We should consider planting trees on our own farm for a number of reasons. I just want to mention a few. Uh, it's going to definitely reduce the long-term risk for families as, as wood just becomes more scarce and expensive. It actually can improve, trees in your farm can actually improve crop yields. There are, there are ways in which to do this and in which when they're planted wisely, they can have positive impacts on yields. Um, they can decrease labor and time spent gathering uh, wood from long distances. So we can reduce the toll on people. And they obviously would provide an additional diversified income source if the families are producing enough. And then it takes pressure off the native landscapes. We're going to discuss mainly two systems of producing wood and briefly mention a third. The first is coppicing woodlots. And the second is planted borders, or sometimes called field edge plantings. And the third is managing large existing trees on the farm. The coppicing woodlot is a strategy for planting trees at very close spacing. These trees are used in the system, uh, the trees that are used in the system are species that can handle very low pruning cuts. They are harvested on a yearly or, or nearly yearly basis. Uh, the trunks, are, the large trunks are harvested and below that pruning cut, sprouts come up. These are trees that have the ability to coppice well, where they re-sprout strong, and those sprouts are strongly attached. We have several examples of them here on the Echo Farm. We have a coppicing woodlot of Guazuma, Caliandra, Albizia, Senna, and Lucena. We start these trees in a nursery and in the springtime, during the dry time, and protect them and grow them in, in, uh, grow them in a, a protected area uh, where we can water them and they're free from roaming animals. And at the time of the rainy season, we plant them and we use a close spacing, a, a one meter by one meter spacing. This is not typical for, for forest plots which have much wider spacings. These close spacings um, allow farmers to get more trees in per area. And the wood doesn't get as large of diameter Farm families don't need huge diameter woods when it comes to cooking. Uh, in fact, the more e fuel efficient cook stoves that use combustion chambers actually require smaller pieces of wood. And, and so it's, they are more efficient with smaller wood. And so we uh, will ha harvest wood um, that is five centimeters or seven centimeters or in diameter. And these work very well for these fuel-efficient stoves. In this system, you can harvest soon. You don't have to wait many years. We began harvesting uh, most plots at three years. And in some plots, we were able to harvest some. Uh, one plot we were able to harvest at two years after planting. Um, and at the harvest time, we were able to use some of the leaves for animal feed for those trees that had good forage. Um, we are trying to keep data on the amount of wood we are harvesting per plot. And it's interesting. I mean, it's very preliminary. Um, but it's, I think, interesting to see how much wood can, can a family produce? How much wood does a family really need? And we were able to, um, we've demonstrated in, in two years so far, uh, on one plot, 200 kgs in year two and 250 kgs in year three from a 10 by 8 meter plot. And just... Calculating these numbers out, if we were able to sustain that yield of 250 kgs per 80 square meters, um, 
we would probably need somewhere in the range of 15% of a hectare to produce uh, just under five metric tons uh, in a year's time. And this is uh, enough wood for most families' needs. Most, most statistics show families using less than five metric tons. So it just puts it into a little perspective. The data is still preliminary from our own farm where the trees go through winter and have been through some hurricanes. Um, so I feel like the yields could be even higher. But uh, combining these system with a more efficient use of the wood, um, your needs go down even more. So we're very excited about this system of uh, growing trees at very close spacing, these trees that handle these low pruning cuts um, on a very frequent basis. Most forestry plots encourage m several year cycles between pruning cuts. But uh, this is one where you never have to replant. You plant once and you continually harvest for 20, 30 years. The second system is border plantings. And it involves the same types of trees that coppice well or prune well, but at a different planting strategy. These trees are planted in a line close together along field edges or borders of roads, along property lines. And these uh, border plantings greatly reduce the impact of shade that trees cause in fields, which generally has a negative impact on crop yields. Planting tree lines is not an uncommon approach. It's very common. But in most cases where I've seen it, it can be improved with better densities and choosing species that have quick and good regrowth. Border plantings can also become a very significant part of a fencing strategy as their location can provide the basis for animal exclusion from fields, which we'll be talking in a later session. So extending the growing season means looking at all aspects of the farm system to move the farm to, toward year-round production and more diversified options for income as well. And planting trees deliberately at high density in woodlots and along borders allows for more options. This includes a more steady year-round supply of wood and forage while reducing labor and income options. These systems commit more land to perennial cropping, capturing the gift of abundant sunlight that exists all year long in the tropical climates, all the while taking pressure off the surrounding landscapes and remaining forests. We'll now look at some examples where farmers in various countries have planted coppicing woodlots and done border plantings around their fields. You see this first picture is from Malawi and this is actually a eucalyptus um, coppicing woodlot, species of eucalyptus that, that you can harvest and it will re-sprout. In this second photo you see a Malina woodlot, Malina arborea. It is another tree that handles low pruning cuts. In this photo, we see Ethiopia, a woodlot, a coppicing woodlot there at high elevation. This is above 2,000 meters. And then here, another example using eucalyptus in El Salvador. And you can see in this next photo how the center pole is taken out and now the new sprouts are coming up and will be trained to be harvested in another year or two. This next coppicing woodlot involves several species, which I really like. It has uh, Senna Siamia, Lucena, and Neem. And the Neem actually is not a tree that coppices well. It doesn't coppice well, but it reseeds well. And so there's new sprouts constantly coming up. The Senna and Lucena coppice very well. And this farmer, this coppicing woodlot was planted in the early 80s and has provided incredible income to this farmer. In fact, he now buys other land in the area, these small plots, and plants trees on them because it is the most lucrative form of income he can find. And he's doing really well. He sells most of his wood to the bakery in town that uses a lot of wood in its baking. Here you see a giant senna tree that has been harvested and has two um, other large uh, trunks that are ready to be harvested and then two sprouts that will be growing up in their place. Like I said, this has been happening for over 20 years. This farmer had a lot of vision and followed through with it with just some excellent stewardship. 
This is another example in Haiti, a Sena Siamia woodlot. This is a very young planting on some very poor soils, soils that were exhausted uh, from producing food crops and uh, is now being committed to tree crops. And this is something that the farmer can rely on in later years for income. And I was hiking through Haiti visiting farmers and we stumbled across one hilltop that was actually forested and I was amazed. I said, how can this be? We must go up to this hill and see this farm because it was so unusual. And we met, and you can see in this picture now, a farmer uh, who is very, he had, he was fairly old in age, uh, but was, he welcomed us there and showed us around his Simaruba Glauca uh, woodlot. And he told us the land could no longer produce corn. It was done. The maize could no longer do. So the last year he planted maize, he planted tree seeds there, the Simaruba tree seeds as well. And this is going to be his retirement. He's going to have a lot of money available to him. Wood is so valuable in these places. So we don't often think of wood as a form of income for small-scale farmers, but it, it really is. And this is one thing I just really want to communicate in this presentation. And this last picture you see of a coppicing woodlot, it's, it is at Echo, where we uh, are showing the uh, Lucena uh, coppiced woodlot, where we actually harvest the wood and weigh the wood um, and... That is where we're getting some of our data from. Now I want to talk uh, and show pictures of the border plantings. Uh, I have several pictures of those that I, I think are, are valuable for you to see. This is back in Malawi, and you can see a field edge that is planted in trees. It's, it's an amazing um, fact to, 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 to think about. But when you plant a single line of trees on the border of one hectare at two meters apart, um, it is one-third the density of a solid hectare planting at four meters apart. And if you plant them at one meter apart, it's two-thirds the density. It's, it's really something how much trees you actually get by planting the edges alone. Most forestry plots are planted at four meters apart, like I said, or some, some wider distance. But you can go closer, especially on borders. We talked about one meter spacing in the coppicing woodlots, and you can do the same on field edges. And uh, so you can, you can achieve, if you can achieve 30 tons per hectare of wood per year, which is, is not an uncommon amount to achieve in wood, one third of that is 10 tons. We talked about four and five tons, some of the averages from these countries of wood used in a year. So just planting the edge alone, if done well, you can maybe harvest around 10 tons. This is double what you need. And if you combine that with fuel, a, a wiser use of wood, cutting it, cutting it, storing it properly, drying it properly, and then using it in a fuel-efficient way, you can really extend that wood and sell the rest. It's fantastic. And so you can really... Uh, gain some added income. This is a great picture here of another field planting, uh, border planting here in Malawi. And you can see it, eucalyptus, and it's been cut back and cut back. And yeah, they're smaller diameter poles, but this is what people are using for construction. This is what they're using for cooking. And so it, it meets a real need. And it keeps it from getting too tall as well to cause too much shade in fields. In this last picture here, you see uh, of border planting in Ethiopia, where they're actually now weaving in horizontal bamboo and branches to take it to the next level, and that's to build a fence on your field edge. And so now you have this multiple purpose planting that is acting as a source of wood, possibly forage in the leaves, and now by its very placement, it is excluding animals, allowing you to do more things on the inside of your farm. And then I just want to mention briefly uh, the third men, um, means for producing wood on farm, and this is harvesting or managing uh, wood uh, coming off mature trees. And you can just see this giant tree here. In, this is in um, El Salvador. And the farmer here uh, has trees that, uh, and you can see in the one picture on the far, the far left, uh, that he keeps pruning back because they do cause shade, and they can, that can have a negative impact on yields. So he, re he reduces the canopy size. And this farmer understood well the impact of shade on especially a plant like maize, which does terrible or does much poor with shade cast on it. 
maize needs a lot of sunlight to grow. And so he has pruned this tree right along his maize field. It's an impressive uh, management strategy he's employed. And when I asked the farmer, where do you get all your wood for your, your cooking? And he, he showed me these trees. And this is, this is how he manages it. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, that, that wood can be produced on your own farms. And this is what we want to move toward, is where you see this stack of wood. This is in El Salvador, again, at another farmer's home, where he had wood stacked and prepared for use later in the year. And then you combine that with good fuel efficiency, as you can see, a, a better stove. It can be even better than this, but this is not a bad example. It, there can be better uh, insulated uh, combustion chambers for, for using the wood. Um, but this really helps increase its efficiency. And then you see another picture of an actual oven um, that is done with um, using wood more efficiently. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how to produce wood on farms to take that pressure off the landscape, possibly increase your incomes, and take that toll off yourself and to have these trees in such a way that they contribute to the productivity of your farm by perhaps building a fence through their presence along a field edge. This provides people with an incredible resource. Families' uh, lives can be improved, and uh, this definitely contributes to people's uh, production and extending the season.